Hey guys, so the third and final topic is um, photosynthesis and cellular respiration, although this title says cell respiration, which is weird. Um, so one thing, remember, we're going to start by highlighting the keywords. Um, so pretty much everything in this title actually says so cycling of matter, photosynthesis, uh, cell respiration, all are pretty important. So then when we're reading our scientific background, right, we see that um, they're talking about ecology is a study of interactions between organisms and their living and non-living environment. An ecosystem supports itself by continuously cycling energy, which originates from the sun within the ecosystem. The energy received from the sun is diverted into living things, fueling the cyclical exchange of both matter and energy. Organisms depend on each other for food, shelter, and the gases they use. Write in the essay where you explain how matter and energy are cycled through an ecosystem. In your essay, be sure to complete the following tasks. Explain how carbon is cycled between biotic and abiotic factors, including producers, consumers, and decomposers, and include examples of each. Compare and contrast. Okay, guys, I'm just going to pause right there. Compare and contrast. Compare and contrast. If you do not do both, then you have not completed this document, and you will get off huge points taken away um, on the gateway. That's, I mean, that is humongous. If you only compare and do not contrast, that, that is big deal. Um, so we have photosynthesis, cellular respiration as they occur in the carbon cycle, um, and explain how the elimination of one link in the carbon cycle can have a detrimental effect on the ecosystem. Okay, so Let's go ahead and start defining some words. So, cycling of matter. Well, we know a cycle is when um, things are used and reused, right? And so, when we talk about matter, um, we can talk about anything that has mass and volume, okay? And it's made up of atoms. So made of tiny little things called atoms, which you should have learned about in chemistry. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna define photosynthesis and cellular respiration over here, just because it's starting to get a little crowded over there by the title. So photosynthesis is the process that uh, plants uh, use to create food in the form of sugar um, using a ah, process that plants use to create food or sugar in the chloroplast, which is the organelle in the plant cells that do that. And then cellular respiration is the process that all cells, um, and the key word there is all, plants and animals both do this. So a process that all cells use to change sugar, which is their food, right, into ATP, which is energy. And what do we know is the powerhouse of the cell? The mitochondria. Um, and so that is where it occurs, right? And so those are kind of long definitions. Um, so ecology, um, I don't really need to define that. They kind of give you the definition in that first sentence. So organisms could be referring to plants and animals. Um, and when they talk about living and non-living environment, that's talking about these biotic and abiotic factors. So biotic means living, abiotic factors mean non-living, um, and so their living environment would be um, other 
animals. Um, so things that are eating them and what they are eating. Um, and then non-living could be their climate, uh, rainfall, right? Their temperature. It could be what rocks or um, habitats are available. Um, and so an ecosystem supports itself by continuously cycling energy, which originates from the sun within the ecosystem. The energy received from the sun is diverted into living things fueled by the cyclical um, that's just like a good word to use. Exchange of both matter and energy. Um, one thing that I want to say is they're hinting at, but not really saying, um, a law that you've learned called the law of conservation of matter and energy. Okay. And what this law says is that matter and energy cannot be created or destroyed. What that means is it can only be transferred, transformed, and changed, right? So atoms don't just disappear. If you have carbon, it has to go somewhere. It can't um, just disappear into the universe. Um, and so when they're talking about that cycle of energy, that's what they're talking about. It can't be created or destroyed. It can only be transformed and reused over and over again. So when they're talking about how carbon is cycled, right? So we're talking about the carbon cycle um and when we're talking about producers consumers and decomposers okay we know that those are all in um food webs um and trophic rolls those are examples of trophic rolls um and so they provide energy for each other so they provide energy for the next one when they get eaten, okay? Um, compare and contrast the process of photosynthesis and cellular respiration as they occur in the carbon cycle and explain how the elimination of one link in the carbon cycle can have a detrimental effect on the ecosystem. So let's go ahead and look at our documents. Okay, um, so in the last video, we really kind of dived into this, so I'm just going to straight up say we see that this is a food web, uh, which is made up of many food chains. So one food chain I see is going from the tree, right, this tree, to the rhino, to... That seems weird that this little bird would eat the rhino, but it probably, oh, that's a vulture, so it's a decomposer. Um, another one is the, the grass, to the mouse, to this thing, to the snake, to the monkey, to the jaguar, to the vulture. Okay, um, and we can see that they're all kind of connected. Um, the lion's kind of at the top of its little chain. Um, and so food webs have many food chains and possibilities inside them. So a good definition of a food chain or a food web is all possible food webs, or excuse me, food chains, which are the pathways of energy. Right, and so the fact that we see a circle here and a circle here, um, you know, all the circular shape indicates a cycle. Um, and so if we want to identify some things um, in here, okay, so I'm just going to get rid of my dramatic circling. 
um, if we want to look at some things, we can see that um, these are examples of producers, right, because they're plants. They're green, which comes from the chlorophyll and the chloroplast um, that's undergoing photosynthesis. They produce their own food. Um, this antelope is an example of a primary um, consumer because it is only eating plants. And so because of that, it is also an herbivore. It's a uh, vegetarian. And we can see that this cat uh, is eating this mouse. Um, well, I think that's a cat. Who knows? And so that would be a secondary consumer. Um, the snake is eating the little cat thing, so that would be the uh, tertiary consumer. Um, the gorilla would be a, I'll start to spell it, quaternary consumer. I literally don't know what we would call the jaguar, but if we were to look at this vulture, okay, there's no way a vulture is taking down a jaguar. And so that's a big indicator that the jaguar must have already been dead. So he is a decomposer. You can always see those like buzzers and crows and vultures and things like that decomposing things. Um, so that's just like one way that we could look at all of this. And it's um, pretty much all about um, that uh, first document. So, or this first bullet point, how carbon is cycled between biotic and abiotic factors, including producers, consumers, and decomposers. Um, so this is, the problem though is you're only going to be able to use document A to talk about biotic factors, okay, uh, because biotic is living, right, and everything in this food web is living. So there are no mention of abiotic factors in document A, so you would have to look somewhere else. So if we look at document B, here is where we can get some uh, abiotic factors. So abiotic factors um, would be referring to, you know, the atmosphere, talking about fossil fuels, things in the soil, um, dead organic matter, right? So all of those things. Um, and so this is a perfect example of a of the carbon cycle. Okay, so one thing to note is respiration or cellular respiration, right? We can see that it put the arrows pointing into the atmosphere. So that's saying it must release carbon dioxide, which as a way of showing some background knowledge, you know that carbon dioxide is CO2. Um, and photosynthesis points the other way. Um, and so that you can see that respiration and photosynthesis do opposite jobs. So when we're comparing and contrasting their roles, right, um, they both cycle. So let's uh, talk about some similarities between photosynthesis and cellular respiration. So some similarities is they both um, cycle carbon dioxide or use carbon dioxide or um, actually, let's just kind of say that they both incorporate uh, CO2 or they both use or create carbon dioxide, right? Um, but some differences is they're the reverse of each other. Um, we can see that... Um, carbon or cellular respiration puts carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, photosynthesis takes it out. Um, and so an abiotic factor, right, would be carbon and fossil fuels. So some examples of this are coal, um, diamonds, well, um, I guess diamonds aren't really fuel for anything. Coal's the big thing, but you put it under enough pressure, you're going to get some diamonds. Um, and so um, organic compounds in molecules. So we can see that cellular respiration is being given off by plants, um, but respiration is also being given off um, by organic compounds. 
uh, in animals. So literally they're eating, they're having to breathe out um, carbon dioxide. So, um, and then the carbon gets into the animals uh, through feeding. Um, and then when plants and animals both experience death, their body gets decomposed into the ground and that carbon um, returns to the to the um, soil. Well, some goes to the carbon dioxide, some goes um, to uh, the soil. And one thing to note is all arrows except for one are pointing into the atmosphere. So that's another big thing. So when it talks about um, in that third bullet point about what would happen if a factor was taken out, um, it depends on which one, but if photosynthesis were taken out, um, photosynthesis is the only way um, for the world and the environment to naturally remove CO2 from the atmosphere. So it's photosynthesis is the only thing or the only process to remove CO2 naturally. So without human um, interference, photosynthesis has to occur in order to regulate CO2 in the air. And so when we as humans are putting off too much CO2 or too much carbon in the air, we really have to plant a lot more trees and things like that in order to maintain the balance um, in the carbon cycle. And so when we look at document C, okay, one thing to note is you are, you should be in a chemistry class or have already taken chemistry. And so a lot of this stuff, you should be able to recognize what it is. So CO2 um, is carbon dioxide, which we've just been talking about with the carbon cycle and things like that. H2O is water. Um, energy, notice they kind of underlined and said energy in. Um, and so one thing to note is that this is an endothermic reaction when it has energy going in. C6H12O6, this is glucose, uh, which is the sugar that um, plants produce. Um, and then it also produces just normal oxygen, which is a diatomic molecule uh, when it's by itself. Also super necessary for you to be breathing right now. Um, and remember that what I am highlighting in pink, those are your reactants, right? You should remember that vocab word. And then your products, oops, your products are this in green, right? So those are your products. And so one thing that you might notice is that um, aerobic, uh, which let's talk about that word there. That one we haven't seen yet. Aerobic means using oxygen. Um, and so we see that here with the six oxygens um, is that the reactants for respiration or cellular respiration require the products from photosynthesis. And cellular respiration produces the products um, necessary to be reactants for photosynthesis. So they are the reverse of one another. Now if it's energy out, that is an exothermic reaction because energy is exiting. And so we know a big theme of the paper has been carbon. And so we th see that carbon goes into photosynthesis as carbon dioxide and comes out as a part of sugar. And then that sugar is regulated through and comes back out as CO2. So that is a cycle of carbon in photosynthesis and cellular respiration. And so that's occurring in plants um, every day. And it, the respiration part is occurring in animals. And so that's a really important factor to keep in mind. So hopefully you can use this to really help you be able to formulate a um, really good annotated prompt for this in the next um, 
prompt, we're going to be looking at really how to do an introductory paragraph. So keep a lookout for that next video.